holographic or hollow movement science. The first book that I read in detail about the holographic paradigm was a series of articles and interviews edited by Ken Wilber called The Holographic Paradigm and Other Paradoxes, Exploring the Leading Edge of Science. I was totally fascinated with the concept of the hologram and utterly intrigued with David Bohm's idea of the hollow movement. This was the closest I had come to anything that approximated what I had been experiencing in my work and in the writing I had been doing about the living process system. Richard Leviton clearly describes several key features of the hologram. One, it has the enormous capacity for information storage in a small space, something like 10 billion bits of information encoded in contour lines in one cubic centimeter of film. Two, the information is distributed in the system such that if the hologram plate is shattered, a single fragment will regenerate the original image with only a little loss of depth of field and resolution. And three, by changing the angle at which the laser strikes the photographic plate, multiple images can be layered on the same surface, like interpreting or overlapping realities. I was aware that what I was reading about a holographic paradigm not only made sense in terms of the living process and deep process work I was doing, the holographic paradigm also was exactly what I was discovering in my study of ancient Egypt, the Mayan culture, the Native Amer American culture, and many others in which the temples, for example, reflect the universe, and the universe is the temple. It was what I heard when I listened to myself and my knowing as I visited these places, spoke to the native people, and did not rely upon anthropologists and others trained in the mechanistic paradigm. Could the concept of the hologram make sense out of my experience of my mother's Irishness? Are we all part of a hologram in which all the parts <clears throat> are the whole, and the whole is the parts? I especially liked Richard Leviton's description of David Bohm's concept of the hollow movement because it fit my experience of a universe in process with everything in it being a process. Bohm rejected the randomness of quantum mechanics and proposed a holographic universe, which he called the implicate order. The implicate order was the frequency domain or blur of wave patterns that enfolded everything time, space, past, present, future, all opposites. I had trouble with the language, yet I knew that my experience in the work I was doing with people moved much beyond Newtonian physics, relativity, and quantum physics, whereas the psychology I had learned was stuck several scientific worldviews back from where my experience was taking me. It is not unusual for social scientists to lag far behind the physical sciences. This lag was no longer acceptable as I evolved in my new learning. Leviton goes on to say, our apparent world, as Bohm said, is a holographic regeneration or enfolded explicate order of this primary frequency realm. The dynamic relations between the two, Bohm calls hollow movement. Although I had trouble with the language of enfolding, exfolding, explicate, and implicate, I knew what these concepts meant from my own experience and the work I was doing with others. I knew that each of us reflects the all, and the all is each of us. Individuals reflect the society, and society reflects the individuals. We are the same, and all of us reflect and participate in what we have called God that God is a process. When people are recovering from the addictions that serve to remove them from the hollow movement, and they then begin to operate out of their living process, they return to their normal state, which is to again be part of the hollow movement and one with what we call God. I was seeing this process in person after person but my science gave me no concept or language to talk with myself or others about it. When I read about Carl H. 
Prebrum's concept of the brain as a hologram and bones hollow movement, I knew that I was learning a science that fit my experience. Or as John Batista, MD, says in The Holographic Paradigm, thus a new holographic model is being developed which emphasizes the interdependent, parallel, and simultaneous processing of events. What we are seeing is, I believe, not just a model, but a worldview that requires a new science. These ideas basically mean that each particular aspect of the hologram can be intimately knowledgeable about every other aspect of the hologram. This could make sense with respect to my mother and her Irishness, and also the phenomena that I have observed and experienced in deep process work. Could it be that the healing work that we have been evolving is the door to what the theorists are writing about, or indeed the practice of it? What if the two major ways of actively entering the hollow movement are through dreams and deep process work? Perhaps this is what the Australian Aboriginal means by dream time. What if we have access to information and realms that were totally inaccessible to a mechanistic science. In a hollow movement universe, there is an acceptance of oneness and spirituality as a given. If we are one with all creation and we participate in that oneness, then we have to establish a cooperative relationship with nature, animals, and all other people because we are the same and are one. Once we remove our estrangement from our awareness of our reality as part of the one, or the hollow movement, and we be begin to participate in that oneness, our lives and the perception of our lives will change drastically. For example, we will no longer treat nature or even other people as we have under a mechanistic scientific worldview. Like so many indigenous people have known, we will have to live with nature and with each other. The key to what Baum is saying can be stated in his words. An essential part of this proposal is that the whole universe is actively enfolded to some degree in each of the parts. Because the whole is enfolded in each part, so are all the other parts, in some way and to some degree. Hence, what mechanistic science has called reality is what Bohm calls only the secondary order of things, or what I have called the illusionary world. Postmodern physics begins with the whole, not the reductionist parts. Perhaps an important key to this wholeness about which Bohm speaks is to bypass the reductionism of our thinking processes. Maybe our deep processes that bypass our rational, logical mind are truly vehicles into the information of the whole and the enfolded universe. I have seen that as people do their deep process work and become respectful of their own process, they begin to respect, almost by default, others' processes and the processes of the universe. Bohm says it well. It follows that if we approach the world through enfolding its wholeness in our consciousness and thus act with love, the work which unfolds our own being within itself will respond in a corresponding way. Can it be that what we call God is an interaction with us to generate what we all love, or the love of God, and that, just as in the Old Testament, God longs for and needs her or his or its people? If we seal ourselves off in our addictions, is what we call God also becoming more addicted? These are important questions, and our thought can play with them, but ultimately, we can only answer them through participation.